So, today we will discuss about a topic which is actually very relevant and also very important for natural resource management and especially for communications and decision making processes. And this is on information communication technologies, in brief we call it as ICT for natural resource management. So, let us uh, have some very fundamental basic idea about ICT. Many of you may be already aware of what information and communication technology could do in our life, in our profession. So, today we will be discussing that how ICT can be actually utilized for efficient management of natural resources. ICT is the convergence of digital and physical resources and this is this convergence allow us to collect information, store, process, retrieve information, generate and finally, transmit it which is very very important. So, today without the help of ICT, it is almost impossible to do carry out some smart exercise in the field of natural resource management. The term ICT is generally you know accepted to express that some devices, some networking components, application of systems and then which provide opportunity for the people or organizations to interact with larger audience to convey their decision or message or even sometime advertise it to the larger world. So, importance of ICT in the field of natural resources is incredible. ICT it encompasses both internet enabled sphere as well as the mobile a mobile one which is actually powered by wireless networks. ICT can also use landline telephones, radios, televisions, walkie talkie. These all basically today you can combine along with other cutting edge technology available uh, in the field of ICT like artificial intelligence, robotics. So, you can actually combine remember even though the advanced technologies of ICT is here today, but still in certain condition certain places our old technologies like radio, television, wireless, uh, you know walkie talkie these are still actually quite useful. So, when we invite welcome the new technologies for ICT revolution, we should not also forget the old ones which have served us in earlier times and still they are very much valid in certain situation. ICT also at sometimes we use synonymously with IT information technology, but there is a very thin line difference between these two. ICT is generally used to represent a broader and more comprehensive list of all components related to computer, digital technology, communications, radio, but whereas in case of IT information technology we largely means computer and digital technologies. ICT can you know reconfigure electronic and physical access to four interrelated resources and which are those information, people, services and technology. These four interrelated resources can be actually utilized in a very nice manner through ICT. Okay? Now, let us see that what are the components of ICT. ICT is basically built of data that means raw facts and figures, then hardware where you actually mean the physical components, the machines, the computers, telephones, software part, information means the data which is converted into some meaningful information procedures a series of functions which you conduct in a certain order to ensure that the system runs smoothly. People the most important part 
So, data which is actually coming into the system is entered by human, right. So, if at the stage of data entering itself there is some problem, the entire exercise may be a failure. So, that is why human sources of people in ICT is a critical component. Let us see that how the ICT as a system it works and what is the data flow mechanism in ICT. Remember participants, I am discussing these basic things of ICT because here among you may be few of you may not be aware of that background of ICT. So, once you understand the basic principles and working flow of ICT, then it will be easy to understand the application of ICT in NRM. As this particular you know figure it shows that how data flows in ICT from one system to the other. Local databases, suppose you are working in a village and you are your the hub is a village knowledge center, we call it VKC. Now, the data actually come to this local database from local web interface and also from local database it can go to local web interface. You collect data also through various you know communication system, you can collect field data, all those things actually remain in this local database and then it is passed through the local web interface from where this data can go to global web interface, to global database, then central server. The other way from global database also, the data may come to global web interface, can go to our local interface and in turn to our local database. This part, this right hand side part is basically, it is outside the your local system and this work through you know some remote client like VPN. On the left hand side you have local PC, local system. Suppose you are sitting in a as I said in a village knowledge center in a village. So, from your local web interface that information will go to the software control system software and then from software control system this information after it is processed it will come back to the local web interface and go into the local database. So, this is how the data flows within an standard ICT system. Now, look at the data flow in ICT, a sustainable framework of ICT data flow system, how it actually works. So, you have open access data or raw data collected from the field and here you have the you know different system installed in the local hub that is your village knowledge center. So, this ICT system it enables transform and inform about this data to the user group, to the policy makers, all the stakeholders. So, how ICT basically helps different stakeholders? It helps by deriving various you know providing various benefits like it provides information on employment, education, mobility, basic necessities like water, health. It also talks about information on personal you know freedom like if you want to have some kind of own platform information like blogs etcetera that you want to make you can do that proper resource utilization and management. So, there are various you know kind of benefits that you can derive from ICT. Now, how ICT and environment are linked with each other? Now, remember ICT has both positive and negative impacts on the environment. Now, what are the positive impacts? Dematerialization and online delivery means in this case you can avoid lot of transportation cost, pollutions etcetera, a reduction in the need for travel by an individual, a host of modeling, monitoring, management application, these things actually you know help you greater energy efficiency in production and uses and also recycling. Because when you 
move one item from suppose one place to the other, then there are many things. First of all, human resources, manpower, then transport. Transport will work, need energy. This may also cause pollutions, traffic, many things. So, this can be actually avoided with the application of ICT and we know that that there are uh, you know many players in the market of uh, online uh, shopping. So, but there are also negative impacts of ICT like the production and distribution of ICT equipment which also has various toxic metals inside that. Energy consumption in use because to produce those ICT equipment you need energy. Short product life cycle, so you generate lot of e-wastes and this is one of the biggest you know concern of modern day science and technology. Potentially exploitive applications, uh, you know sometimes some of the instruments can explode also. We have many news is coming in these days. So, there are positive and negative both side I think we have to be with that for any kind of technology that comes into our life. Which are the factors basically affect ICT functionality that is also important to understand. See in ICT there are various factors are involved directly or indirectly which affects the you know feasibility of ICT implementation at any place. First of all geography location the accessibility to an area whether you can you know at all can reach there because you need to transfer certain items equipments from one place to the other. Political environment, political will without that it is not possible simplicity and compatibility especially when you talk about natural resource management which need to be managed largely from the rural area very few natural resources that we have actually you know inside the urban area. Now, when a, most of the resources are away from the urban area in rural area or, or surrounding places, you need simple technology which can be easily understood and operated. Cost of technology another important factor these days the budge is that low cost technology. How you can actually come out with uh, any technology which is having low cost education very important awareness of course then genders age and gender this also sometime actually affect ict uses so we need to actually take care of this couple of important factors which can actually impact the feasibility of ict its application and efficiency let us look at how now ict act in natural resource management paradigm now you have little bit idea that how ict actually works in natural resource uh, management in most of the developing countries they are actually facing lot of stress including our country most of the natural resources are now being exploited for rapid pace of development many many countries are now increasingly getting concerned about uh, sustainable use of natural resource management how best they can use their land and their water resources. Now, ICT can play an important role for managing those kind of critical resources. Population is you know increasing very fast and there is a requirement for stronger step at you know national level to monitor uh, various natural resources and also they need to take immediate steps to maintain these resources whenever somebody tries to overuse that. So, that means it brings the legal angle. So, it goes back to the you know previous lectures that we have discussed. So, stringent rule, stringent law is also required because there are certain natural resources which you cannot allow to get abused. Okay? Efficient use of information communication technologies is very very important for inclusive growth 
utilizing various natural resources. The importance of ICT, you know, you will see that though it is said information communication technology, but the importance of the technology per se is basically less than creating and accessing information or communication to the remote test people to all kind of caste, creed, gender, regardless of gender, the information needs to be spread to every last person that they are staying you know, far away from the source of the information. We call it as last mile connectivity. You might have heard about this word. So, the ICT can actually help you for an inclusive kind of you know, knowledge generation of various aspects. So, you can understand how critical it could be for natural resource management. Also, to understand the trends, the various relationships between a natural resource, climate, environment, it is important that you combine various data from different sources and when you try to do that, that lot of data coming from different sources, you need also different kind of standards or protocol because data from source A and data coming from source B, they might have been collected in a different way. So, we need to have a standard protocol in place for data collection because data collection is the first step of generating a reliable information. So, once those data collection is taken care of, then you have to have also stringent quality ensuring policy, so that the knowledge that is gathered and spread among the communities is as much as possible error free. Because we know that these days wrong information or fake information, fake uh, data, you know going to the public can create unwanted amount of stress and confusion. So, we need to be careful about that, ICT can help us to do that. ICT can also have significant effects where time lags are a barrier for achieving the planned goals or targeted goals. Say you are you know sometime somewhere a forest fire takes place. Now, that forest fire is taking place may be far away from the fire brigade facility. Now, this kind of emergency such as you know these forest fires or any kind of disease uh, outbreak in that kind of situation immediately to send a person there on the ground may be difficult and that kind of situation information communication technology can play a crucial role of, of managing uh, this kind of you know disasters from far away from the point of you know event. It can also make a difference when markets are involved into some activity. There are various natural resources, uh, biomedicinal plant, fruits, vegetables, you name it. So, those things when you generate livelihood from those natural resources, there will be a linkage with the market. Again, ICT can help you to access, to link the market with the produce. So, as you see that ICT actually can play a very crucial role. Another aspect is you know technology transfer, technology transfer from developed country to developing country, from central government to state government, from state government to the you know panchayat. So, transfer of technology at each level can be made much more you know what you call streamlined utilizing information communication technology. So, you know this uh, simple figure it shows that technology transfers or dissemination of knowledge when it starts, it passes through knowledge compilation where you actually come out with handouts, publications, research journals for knowledge disseminations and these activities then it helps in capacity building by increasing your awareness, training, workshop, technology, sensitization program, all these things that you carry out ultimately will enhance your knowledge right? and develop your 
skill and ICT can play a very important role in that. Now, let us look at that how ICT based various tools can be applied for processing, food processing say, exchanging, managing data, information, knowledge management and many other things. Now, as I told that ICT helps you very quickly gathering lot of data, convert into information, disseminate it to the stakeholders. Now, what it does, it record you know various takes, drawing, photographs, audio video, it process various description and other information in digital format, which can be very quickly sent from one point to the other. It also produce exact duplicates of such information at a very low cost. Remember those days when we did not have Xerox machine or computer or camera or mobile. Nowadays, if you have a document in front of you and you want to send your parents who are uh, maybe 1000 kilometer away from you or you need, you are suppose in college, you need a certificate. Your dad immediately take a picture sent through WhatsApp within a you know, few seconds it reaches to you. So, that is the power of ICT in information exchange, transfer and producing exact duplicates also because you are taking the picture and these days officially also mobile pictures of some document is accepted provided you just you know self attest and submit it. Transfer of information and knowledge as I just now said can rapidly over large distance can move and that has you know enhanced our quality of life and mobility. It also helps in developing standardized algorithms to large quantity of information can be processed within very small period of time. It also help us to achieve greater interactivity and communicating between each other organization, districts, states, countries. It help us in evaluating, producing and sharing useful information and knowledge in a fraction of a moment. Today's world, time is equivalent to money and ICT plays a crucial role in managing time and help you to avoid financial losses. The management of natural resources especially uh, with the help of ICT is one of the uh, most you know talked about topic today in the field of environment economics management. All natural resources and their utilization management can be optimized with the help of ICT. And if you look at the aspect of NRM, this following major aspects for which or in which ICT plays a very, very important role. ICT for soil management, for water management, for agriculture and for disaster. Now, these two soil and water are the two most important natural resources among which the civilization probably is dependent upon. And then comes agriculture in our country even today significant amount highest number of populations depends for their livelihood on agriculture. Even though we have developed in many technology field industry, but still majority of our populations, they survive on agriculture, they earn their livelihood from agriculture and then disasters, such a big country, we have all kind of disasters. So, ICT plays again an important role in disaster management too. Mm -hmm.